And today, my guest is Joe Horton. Joe is a husband, father, podcast host, and business owner who believes meaning to be the center of everything that men do. He hosts the Guild of Dads podcast, which is a weekly interview show dedicating to equipping dads with all the tools, resources, and ideas needed to begin to craft a vision for their own lives. Each week, he interviews entrepreneurs, athletes, ex-servicemen, best-selling authors, including me, (laughs) stuntmen, filmmakers, and BBC presenters, along with many other men and women at the top of their game. So I'm super excited to welcome Joe to the show. Hi, Joe. Hi, hi, hi. How are you doing? Um, I'm very pleased to be on here and speaking to you. Oh, yeah. Well, it's great for me to be interviewing you for a change because usually you're interviewing me. So welcome. Thanks for your time today. Will you just tell us a bit about who you are and what you do, Joe? Yeah. So I'm I'm the host and founder of a, a movement, if you like, called Guild of Dads. And what I do is weekly, I interview uh, different kind of visionary dads from across the world, uh, stretching as far east as Australia, as far west as Los Angeles. Um, And what I do is I speak to a number of different inspirational men on my podcast, which enable my listeners to really uh, think about their own lives and what they want to achieve in their own lives and what possibilities there are for them in their own lives. Um, But also, I interview experts on a number of different areas which affect men. So mental health, physical health, relationships, uh, contribution to the world, be that either their jobs, careers, or um, sort of social contribution, if you like. Um, And the idea of it is, is to really kind of equip skills and tools and resources they need in order to live more fulfilling more meaningful lives and and so I do that via the podcast and also uh, my Facebook group and my uh, brotherhood for dads which is called the dad circle yeah I think it's really interesting because obviously a lot of my listeners are female and you know having been a big fan of John Gray men are from Mars women are from Venus when it came out that book many many years ago yeah I think it's really interesting to have a perspective from both sides and really to understand how we cope differently. I mean, that's generalizing, I guess, a bit. But, you know, on the whole, men and women cope differently with things, don't they? So, you know, for those people going through a breakup right now, do do you think men and women cope differently with with divorce and breakups? Yeah, I think they do. And I think the thing is, is that there is this kind of tendency at the moment, and I think this is in part of the kind of wider society to kind of homogenize men and women together. As, as responding and reacting to things exactly the same when men and women deal with stuff very, very differently. And you mentioned uh, John Gray there. He's, he has a very good thing that he explained to me when I spoke to him about this concept of uh, cave time. And what he says is that men, when they are going through something very difficult and very traumatic and very stressful, they need to be able to kind of withdraw from the situation and go and kind of make sense of it, whether it be through kind of journaling or meditation or doing a hobby or going to the gym or spending time with their friends. They need a way to kind of process it out in order to come back to the situation and see it more kind of logically. Uh, And I think that women deal with that situation in a slightly different way in that I think that women have got more of an infrastructure of friends around them, um, girlfriends that they'll talk to about stuff. And, you know, someone mentioned it to me recently, this kind of concept that, you know, if you're in a bar or if you're in a club, you know, those those days when we used to go clubbing and women will go into the uh, girls' toilets and they'll start chatting with another woman while they're doing the makeup and they'll be, talking about what uh, dress they're wearing, where did they get their dress from? And, and, and all of a sudden, the, the, there is a more sort of therapeutic value to the way women interact than what men do. It's a very, very different way of processing emotions and thoughts and what you're going through, definitely. Yeah, I agree. It's interesting, isn't it? And I think the challenge with that is that we misread each other. 
So women will look and say, well, why aren't they talking to me? Why isn't he opening up? You know, I, and find it frustrating because we will assume that they're doing it for different for different reasons because it's not what we would do. If we were doing that, it would mean we didn't care, we didn't want to communicate, we were purposefully being difficult potentially. So we are putting our own what I call map of the world onto onto them and vice versa. So the more that women say, "Well, talk to me, open up to me, come on," that also you know is going to trigger maybe it's going to sound like nagging or it's going to cause things to escalate. Whereas if actually having that understanding of this is the natural process, this is how men on the whole will react to a stressful situation. And this is how women, how we react to it. So by understanding that, we've become consciously aware of what's going on. So therefore, maybe we have the better tools for it, which is why I wanted to do this podcast with you, Joe, because I think it really shines a light for us women on what's going on, as well as for my male listeners to really understand you know, this is why these things are happening. And, you know, that obviously gives you a bit more clarity, which helps you move forward, I think, in these difficult times. Mm. So, so what are the biggest challenges that you see for men going through tough times, like a breakup, for example? Well, I, I think that a lot of what, what happens often occurs because of what we're kind of told. So, so for instance, I think that a lot of men are told we just you know we briefly discussed this before came on air that it's kind of all about happy wife happy life so what they are doing is effectively trying to do everything to make their wife their wife or their partner happy but the problem is is that that comes at a cost of their own happiness and then i think that there is also for for, for ladies i think they may also have been told by their mums what they how they need to show up in the relationship and you know that if their husband isn't doing what he should be doing then he needs to be damn well told what he should be doing and if, if he doesn't step up then you need to crack the whip and you know this is a very sort of stereotypical view but i think that there is a legacy in our generation that we're that, that we've got from kind of the baby boomer generation and the problem is is that that is a recipe for disaster in relationships because effectively what you've got is you've got the the man or the husband kind of thinking well I need to invest all this stuff in the relationship in order to make it work and I'm going to stop doing all the things that make me me conversely the the woman is doing the same exactly the same thing um they're operate they're they're operating their 2021 uh, marriage based on uh, I don't know nine what what worked in the 1970s um and it's not working and the more that it doesn't work the more they do it and the more it causes more problems and and rather than kind of i mean i always look at it like einstein's einstein says the definition of madness is doing the same thing over and over and again and expecting a different result and i think that in relationships i think that kind of our generation have got to this point of we're doing the same things over and over again and expecting a different result and I think that we almost need to kind of have a big shake up throw everything up in the air and say right let's try something completely different now rather than doing it the way we've always been doing it you know what I mean yeah I think that's right happy happy wife happy life did you say I love that um <laughs> that is something where you think okay well that's a nice thing to do that's a nice thing that someone's aiming to do but obviously if that's at risk of sacrificing your own of happiness in a way then that that's obviously going to be detrimental as it is for women who go in to say I'm going to do everything I can to make him happy then he'll love me then he'll stay that concept is obviously very one-sided mm -hmm. so what's your advice with that then if you have set about to do that and it's not working what are the shifts you think that can help to to either reignite that relationship or give you more clarity on what to do next I think the 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 main thing is, is to get clear on what you want, what your needs are, what your boundaries are, what you uh, what you want in terms of your 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 own mental health, your physical health, all of these different things. Because then, once you're clear on all of these things, then you can say, well, okay, this is what I need to keep me kind of being me 
my my personality and retain my personality and my my identity and my um, physical health as well, uh, and be clear on those things, so that then you can decide. Well, hang on a minute. So how does this then integrate into the relationship I want with my wife or partner? Uh, and and what of these things are red lines for me? Is it that I'm going to get really upset about the fact that they don't stack the dishwasher in a certain way? Or, or is my red line going to be more along the lines of, actually, I want them to, to communicate with me in a respectful manner? Um, so it's been clear. I mean, and, and a simple way of looking at it is having like a, like almost like a traffic light system. So you have the reds that are the things that are your real strong things that you really are quite keen on having in place in terms of boundaries and needs. Your oranges are the things that are kind of, I'm not really too fussed about this stuff. And the um, and the greens are the stuff that it's just really not worth our, it's just not really important because it's easy to get into the habit of thinking, I want to change this person. Okay, but the problem is, is the more that you're trying to change that person, the more you're trying to make them different to who they already are, that's not going to make them feel comfortable in the relationship. It's, in fact, you're going to push them away the more you, the more you do all those things that are, that are trying to shape and mould them into the person that you want them to be rather than who they are, you know what I mean? Yeah, I love that traffic light system because I do think it's important to, well, I agree, work out what you want first of all and what's important to you. But then also, you know, be realistic and not fighting over the dishwasher maybe may not be something that's worth the battle. Whereas, you know, something that compromises maybe your morals or beliefs, that's something worth fighting for. So actually working out what is key. And I guess ways to do that is really work out where do you feel most hurt rather than irritated. I guess, where mm. do you feel that your voice isn't being heard, um, that actually compromises your confidence maybe or who you are rather than just irritates you like you know dropping clothes on the floor or the dishwasher challenge you know? um i think it's really important yeah to work those things out so i also think that for men sometimes and i'm definitely the people that reach out to me find it really hard when they have to move out of the family home you know quite often it's the it's the mum and the kids that stay in the family home not all the time these days but a lot of the time probably more so so the mums get to stay and the dads move out, um, sometimes due to work commitments. They can't have their kids on an equal basis, although many do these days. Um, so obviously when you, when you move out of the family home and you're not seeing your, your kids as much or you just don't have that family unit around you, you can lose a sense of yourself, can't you? And I know you were saying then about trying to rediscover who you are and what's important to you. How do you even start that when it feels like your whole world is falling apart? I think the first thing to remember is, is that when you're going through a traumatic situation, be it whether it's a separation or whether it's a bereavement or any other big thing that's happening, even if you lose, you, know, you lose your job or something, what happens when your brain is going through that situation is that it's, everything speeds up. It speeds up and it seems... 10 times worse than what you think it's the, than what it actually is so which means that your brain is racing you think the whole world is going to end you think your life is going to end uh, and what happens is you don't think clearly and what you what the, the trick is with this is to slow things down you want to start to slow things down you don't have to solve all your problems overnight you don't have to come up with a solution to it all overnight but what you can do is focus on the things that are kind of that are actually in your control because these are the things that are going to enable you to kind of take those stepping stones forward and what's really interesting about when it comes to separation is that many men feel that separation is the end of the road it's it's game over it's finished it's done but in my experience a lot of the guys that I have worked with they find that often separation is a necessary reset on their that there's relationship is needed for a, for a long while and there's two, there's a couple of reasons for that the first reason is is that when you're in a relationship you become invested in it which is what we've just been discussing 
So you, everything is about the relationship, about making the relationship work. And when it's not working, you're doing more and more stuff to try and make it work. So you're forcing it all the time. Um, and what's counterintuitive to a lot of guys is that when you separate, all of a sudden there's a bit of distance and you are able to back off for a little bit. You're not putting so much pressure on yourself to make it work. Your wife's not putting so much pressure on herself to make it work. It enables you the space to begin to think about what it is you want in terms of those needs and boundaries and your future and how you want your relationship to look. But also it gives your wife a chance to think about things as well. And if she has placed all of the reliance on the marriage resolving itself in you, once you're out of the picture, then it forces her to then look at the part she's played in it as well and come up with solutions as to how that could be done differently or whether there's going to be reconciliation or whatever. But separation is not always the end of the world that people think it is. It's, it, it provides a necessary breathing space. And also this reset that I'm talking about in terms of working out what you want and working out what your wife wants. Because whilst you're both two, um, there's a guy that I've interviewed on my podcast called Andrew Marshall. Um, and he talks about this concept of the more you're trying to force the issue and try and make something work, paradoxically the more it pushes you apart and in actual fact a lot of I think reconciliation particularly after separation is around actually backing off a little bit um, having a bit of breathing space working out what you want and not forcing the issue so much yeah I think you're right you, you can't control other people their behavior what they say you can only control yourself and you know you can control your reactions a lot of my episodes on this podcast are about how to cope when things are happening and it feels like you should be angry and sad and yes that's a natural human reaction but you can also take control and dial those negative emotions down so i agree it is a chance to re reset your life i like that because getting off that treadmill having some time out does give you both both sides time to think and plan what could happen but also to miss each other if that's going to happen as well and sometimes getting out of that warring scenario when you're under the same roof which we're seeing a lot more of now in lockdown unfortunately um just having a bit of breathing space can actually calm things down you're right i think that does make a big difference so how do people start resetting their life then i mean obviously losing that you you do lose a sense of your identity when you go through a breakup so it's almost trying to figure out who you are now you're single so how do you suggest or how do the men that you work with joe how do they start to to get back on track with that they've they've calmed things down they've stepped away and now what what does the future look like typically a lot of a lot of men are actually very lonely deep down and uh, when, when I and people when you, when you say that people sort of think, well, what do you mean they're lonely? They've got they've got their family around them, and they've got and they've got their friends, and they've got this and they've got that. But I think a lot of guys don't really kind of um, they've not really got anyone that they sort of speak to and that they're that close with a lot of the time. So a lot of and and the kind of again the way in which we deal with stuff nowadays is kind of we kind of sedate our emotions and we've seen this in lockdown. So smoking, drinking, you know, you can name all of the different things that people use to kind of cope with stuff. I think that when you're going through a difficulty, you're forced to face things down. Um, and people listening to this may have heard of Jocko Willing's book, Extreme Ownership. And it very much comes down to ownership. You, you, is the, the modern world has kind of primed us to be not accountable and not face responsibilities and blame someone else for what's happened. And, and, and we will bought into this very collectively in terms of actually, well, it's, it's their fault. But I think when you go through a separation or when you are having to look at yourself very closely in the mirror, you probably for the first time having to actually accept that it's not all the other person's fault, 
there's actually quite a number of things that you've done wrong that you should have been doing that you should have been doing right and many of the many of the guys i see you know there's not only a relationships breaking down but they're not looking after their physical health they've not got a uh, a uh, infrastructure of friends and people they can speak to um, they're staying up late at night playing on xbox or doing whatever they're doing and so they're not really looking after themselves and they really and the the the, the marriage has become it's, the marriage falling apart is a symptom of something a lot wider and that is that they've lost they've just basically lost themselves they've, they've lost who they are what they are what they stand for and and they're, they're kind of they're on like a runaway juggernaut of life if you like which is so life is kind of running them rather than them running it when you start to take responsibility for for these different areas then you go back into the driving seat of your life and you're clear on what you want and what you don't want but i, I mean i call it the man in the mirror concept which is basically you know, we all look in the mirror every morning, we see that person staring back at ourselves and they represent the person that we could be and that we want to be and we know we should be. But a lot of us run away from that person and, and, and anaesthetize the feelings of running away from that person with various different things. But actual fact, when you turn around and face that person down, and the first time a lot of people do it is after a divorce or bereavement or tragic event then you begin to actually say hold on a minute this is on me all of this stuff's on me my happiness is on me you know how I show up to the world is on me is on me how my, I want my relationship to be with my kids regardless of whether I'm with their mother or not that's on me um, and it's a really abstract abstract way of looking at it but it's kind of like um you know, in uh, there's an Indiana Jones film where he steps out across the precipice, and he has to trust that the that the he has to trust his faith in God that the steps are going to form in front of him, and that's almost what it, that's almost the journey that men need to go on, in order to just trust that trust in themselves that they can do it. And the thing is, is is that women pick up on this, you know. I know it's a very, it's a deeply unpopular opinion to have on this, but women pick up on guys that are confident. They know where they're going. They have a plan. Um, they know themselves. They admit their shortcomings. They don't try and be perfect. They know this. They've got faults. Women pick up on that, and that is more attractive than any nice shirt, any ripped abs, any uh, fast car. A guy that knows who, what he's about, where he's going and what he's doing, that is a guy that women want to be married to. And the thing is, this is why when guys do this reset and they begin to start looking at themselves and what they're about, more often than not, their wives will say, hang on a minute, that's the guy that I married 10 years ago, 15 years ago. He's awesome. I want to be with that guy. And if she doesn't want to be with him, then the chances are there'll be another lady that does want to be with him. So all of this worry and anxiety and stress about the fact that your life is going to end, the chances are it's not. Once you've got your act back to under again, it's probably going to continue, if not better than what it was before. Yeah, I love that. I think, I think you're so right. I think that divorce and breaking up with someone that you cared about is... You know, traumatic it is known as the second most traumatic life experience we go through after death of a loved one and it's very easy to stuff down those emotion, emotions and not really face them and sort of drag them along with us and maybe distract ourselves by like you said drinking more partying more just going out on loads of dates not really processing things but if you do face it and you do deal with it then yeah I mean I think learning to love yourself before you start dating is the best way forward because nobody else is going to fill those gaps in you. It's just not going to work. It's not going to be fulfilling for either of you if you're both leaning in on, on each other for help because you're both heartbroken and struggling with issues from the past. So yeah, I think resetting your life and 
I love that looking at the man in the mirror and, and trusting yourself that it's going to be okay. Because with hindsight, you know, I have to say that a lot of my clients who have been through divorces and now look back, so a year on, two years on, say, yeah, it was tough at the time, but you know, I'm really almost glad now that that happened because look where I am now. I've learned the lessons. And I think that's important, as you say, to learn those lessons. But now I'm stronger, I'm more confident, and actually I've attracted somebody that is maybe even better suited to me now in this phase of my life than my last partner was. So yeah, I think there's something very healthy about going on that reset journey. And again, having the faith, because you, you will get there. So looking after yourself is important. So what do you recommend, Joe? Exercise is obviously important. What other things can people do to, to help themselves? As you said, men don't often have a big support system around them. And it can be scary to ask for help, no? Yeah, it is. It is. And I think the thing is, is I always look at men asking for... <laughs> If you use an analogy, men asking for help is kind of like a little bit like, you know, when you go along to like a cheesy family disco and all the guys are standing up at the bar and they're like, no, no, I'm not going to dance. I'm not going to dance. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to yeah, dance. Well. <laughs> <laughs> then, and then what happens is after about five or six pints, they're in the middle of the dance floor doing air guitar to die straight with their tie tied around their neck, uh, around their uh, head, like <laughs> Karate Kid style. And I think getting guys to talk is very much like that. It's to stand, they they'll stand at these sort of sidelines for a little while before they get up the confidence to talk. But in terms of the stuff that that you need to be focusing on, really, is some people say physical health comes first. Some people say mental health. I think they're kind of they're two sides of the same coin, if I'm honest, because I think that when you look after yourself physically, you feel better mentally. And I think the two things kind of bounce off each other. So the first the first and foremost is to do some kind of exercise, even if it's walking half an hour a day, get outside because not only do you get the health benefits of it, but also you get the, uh, the mental health benefits of it as well. Because if you're walking, you're out in the fresh air, um, you've got time to think and process and stuff. And, so from that point of view, physical health is important. The biggest thing that guys neglect is self-care in, from what I can see. And when I talk about self-care, it's your relationship with yourself. And people think, well, what does, do you mean by that? It's like a bit crazy. And this applies to men and women. So your relationship with yourself is, in simple terms, uh, the relationship you have with your own thoughts, feelings and emotions. And I think that what often happens is that we're taught to push emotion and feelings and stuff away because uh, the class is negative or positive. And so we push away the negative ones and trump along the positive ones. But some way of being able to process this, journaling is a really good way for guys because they can get their thoughts down on a sheet of A4 paper or, or a posh journal, whatever you want to do, but it gets stuff out of your head and onto a piece of paper. So journaling is a good one. Meditation is another good one because again, it, cha it changes your relationship with thought and enables you to not get so caught up in thoughts and emotions and kind of rumination. Uh, hobbies are another good one as well. Stuff that, you know, if there's, if you like getting out on your bike or if you like doing woodwork or if you like doing um certain crafts or things like that anything that kind of is going to get you out of your head it could be reading it could be if you're re if you're religious it could be reading scripture anything that's going to get you out of your head is is going to be a good thing and enable you to process sort of emotion so physical health mental health your relationship with you with yourself self-care self-care is massive absolutely massive and getting into good self-care habits is going to pay dividends for the rest of your life, in, in, in my opinion. Um, the third thing is, is when it comes to kind of families and divorce and separation is think about yourself in terms of a role model. Okay, it's stressful at the minute. You're, you may be estranged from your wife or partner and you're not seeing your kids as much as you would like to. At some point in their future, they're going to be growing up and they're going to be remembering the times where mum and dad split up. Now, do they want to remember you standing at the end of the 
garden gate shouting at mum or and, and, and being grumpy and being negative and stuff or do they want to remember the positive guy that used to show up bang on the dot every every week to take them out or whatever that it was going to do with them and I think that this is the kind of third aspect of breakup is that what role model do you want to be to your to your kids uh, in terms of going through difficult situations and this has become quite topical for me in this last little while with pandemic because I think that a lot of parents are kind of losing their SH1T for want of a better word and going a little bit mad about the pandemic which I understand because it's stressful and stuff but your kids are a reference point for you so if they see you flipping out whenever anything gets difficult then as they become adults their, their reference point is going to be right so what do I do when things get difficult oh I flip out like mum and dad used to do so it's really important to okay show your emotions but not get too carried away and then that you're just kind of completely losing it because that's yeah. not anything either i mean that that's really good advice I, I i totally agree i see that at the moment too a rise in tensions rising and people losing their tempers with each other everyone's less patient but i think also when you're going through a divorce you are a role model for your kids also, they're looking at how do men or husbands treat treat wives. That's what they're learning. You know, the boys are learning, well, this is what you're supposed to do. And the girls are learning, this is how it's supposed to be. Uh, and vice versa. So it's a really interesting time because the, your gut instinct might be to shout and scream and say how unfair things are or how mean someone's being. But actually, if you can step back, take a deep breath and, and just do the right thing for you. You know, what do you think the right thing is? The other person might not be doing that. But if you can stick to doing the right thing um, and, you know, if there are areas that are crossing boundaries, then you can get help for that, whether it's legal help or, you know, ask for help from a coach or a, a therapist. But, you know, trying to, for the kids sake, I agree, make it as amicable, you know, uh, conscious uncoupling is what Gwyneth Paltrow called, called it, wasn't it? Trying to do the right thing for the kids and, and being as amicable as possible is always a great way forward. So, Joe, my podcast is called Heartbreak to Happiness um, because I think it's all about the journey. It's, you know, starting somewhere which is traumatic and then moving through, digging deep and, and working towards happiness, whatever that is for you. So what is happiness for you, Joe? How would you define it? I think, be, I think happiness for me is actually going on a journey in life. Uh, it's growing, developing, learning new things uh, and also experiencing those things with the people that are close to you. So creating memories and experiences as well. So it's going on a journey and creating memories and experiences within that journey. So I think for me, I, I would say that it's going on a journey and uh, a journey which is creating experiences and memories with the people that are close to you, whether it's your friends or family members, whoever that may be. Oh, I like that. I like that a lot. So I know a lot of my listeners will want to find out more about you and how they can find more information out. So where do they go, Joe? Okay. So Guild of Dads, the best way to find out about Guild of Dads is go to guildofdads.com. Uh, I'm on Instagram. Twitter and Facebook at Guild of Dads. Uh, we also have a Facebook group as well, which is a free Facebook group. It's totally free to join. We've got a few hundred members on there now. Um, and we talk about various different things to do with fatherhood, but also self-development as well. So I'm very much fatherhood, but with an with a, uh, emphasis on self-development. For guys that are looking for something a bit more, I also have my own exclusive brotherhood, which is called the Dad Circle, which is at dadcircle.com. Um, and what that is, is it's a community of guys who are looking to become the man and dad they've always wanted to be, which practically speaking is accountability, a, a group of guys that are on exactly the same journey. Um, and we have, we have Zoom calls, monthly topics, assignments, uh, so it's a little bit more of a level up in terms of for, for guys that are really looking to kind of grow and develop and become the men and dads they wanted to be. 
So that's the dadcircle.com. Oh, that's amazing. I know you've got a free ebook on there as well, which is packed full of good information. And yeah, I'm so glad you came on, Joe, because I think there's a big need for support for dads out there. There's, there's a lot for mums, there's a lot for women, um, and there isn't as much for dads. So you're doing amazing work. You're bringing some incredible people together. And I know it's making a big difference for men going through those tough times. So thank you so much for being a guest today. Pleasure, my pleasure. And thank you very much for having me on. That's it for today's episode. Be sure to head over to Guild of Dads on Instagram, Facebook and Twitter to find out more about Joe and his work. And I look forward to you joining me on our next episode. Mm-hmm.